Hello, everybody, and welcome to Camping Corner. What's up, America? Hey, we are both back on the screen. We know that you missed both of us. We had to put up with Dan for a couple episodes. You know. But now we're back together. One big happy family. Socially distanced. <laughs> so, yeah, we, so we kind of switched up the show a little bit based off of feedback. We love hearing your feedback. We do. So thank you for that. Stop saying all the bad stuff about Dan, though. He's very sensitive. <laughs> he cries in the corner when he reads it. <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to try some different things, kind of see what, you know, you guys are liking, what you're not liking. So be sure to leave in the comments, hey, we really love this segment. We could do without this one. Whatever your feelings are, just let us know. Yeah. So... As we go through and live through this unprecedented pandemic, uh, one of the things that's been on, not only on our minds, but a lot of our viewers' minds is, you know, what exactly is going on in the RV industry? What's going on in the world? Well, first and foremost, there's an inventory shortage. If you haven't noticed, we're hurting for inventory. Not just us, but every dealer is looking for inventory. Everybody wants to be camping. So we figured we would take the opportunity for what's the buzz and talk about the buzz of inventory shortages. The buzz of inventory shortages. <laughs> and there are some great things. Yes. You know, if you are new and you're looking for your first camper, a couple things that we, that we would suggest is the fact that build a relationship with an established dealership, preferably Walnut Ridge Family RV Sales, located in the heart of beautiful Newcastle, Indiana. Just a block, a bridge, and a hop, and a skip from everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but build a relationship with a salesperson, because the reality is, when that perfect RV comes in for, for you, whether it be pre-owned or uh, brand new, we'll be glad to give you a call and get you going on it. Yeah, definitely check the website, too, because we are definitely loading ones every day on the website that could possibly interest you. So like Tony said, along with that established relationship with the salesperson, check the website. You know, can't stress enough that if that one comes in that you do love, I know a lot of people, we hear it all, you know, we see it and hear it all the time. They want to think about it, sleep nope, on it. Nope, I don't buy nothing the first day. I'm going <laughs> to think about it till tomorrow. And then it stinks because then the next day we have to call that person and be like, oh, it's gone. Yeah. I mean, that's happened quite a bit lately. Yep. Um, so when you do find that perfect one, and you know it's the one, you should go for it. Yep. You know, the years ago I read a quote, of course being in sales for years and years, I read a, read a quote that said, the, the one you looked at today and wanted to think about till tomorrow is the one somebody looked at yesterday and wanted to think about till today. Yep. So the reality is, if you find the right one, if it's, you know, 80%, 90%, you know, jump on it, yeah. own it, get camping, get out glamping. <laughs> the leaves are changing. We are in, we're in perfect camping. Oh, this is the best camping season. Shorts and t-shirts during the day, campfires at night, s'mores, not a ton of mosquitoes, lots of bees during the day. <laughs> but yeah, if you're so, if you're sorry, I don't no, know. you're go you go ahead. If you're allergic to bees, make sure you bring your EpiPen. <laughs> I was just going to say, so yeah, shortages are a thing, but it doesn't have to be a scary thing. No, so. absolutely not. There's still a, a, there's still a bunch of great inventory out there. Yes. Okay, guys, so new segment. I'm going to throw you guys on the spot. Are you ready? Ready. I ask people on social media what they were looking for, what they need help with. We get so many people that are like, I'm looking for a, a quad, I'm looking for bunkhouse, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for that. They're not exactly sure. And we added things to the website to help people find stuff, you know, length, width, height, all that good stuff on there. But I took a couple of questions, I wanna throw them at you guys, okay? So the first one comes from Ashley Ray. She has a family of three, teenage daughter, they have a Ford F-250 truck, so they have my heart. The daughter wants to bring friends along. They have around a $25,000 budget, and they're hoping for an outside kitchen. What would you guys suggest? Oh, high, high L-318. High L-318? High L-318. 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 High L-318.
Hide out 318 for sure. You're going to have plenty of sleeping space for all those kiddos when you bring your friend. F uh, big full outdoor kitchen where it's got, isn't it the eight cubic foot refrigerator out there? No, it's got the three and a half cubic foot, the, but it's got the big dorm side. That's right. Three, okay. Three That's and a half right. cubic foot. Sorry, my bad. Wrong on that. But you get a sink out there. You get your cooktop out there. Two burner stove. Yeah. Extra countertop space. Uh, five bunks. Mm -hmm. A total of five bunks in the bunkhouse. That is if uh, Ashley. Yes. If Ashley and her family were looking for a travel trailer. If they're looking for a travel trailer, That's 318 um, bunkhouse down. under $25,000. Um, you know, tons of stuff. Built in central back system, uh, 10.4 cubic foot, 12 volt refrigerator, lots of storage space inside it. Yep. Perfect unit. All right. Great question, or great answer, guys. So the next one comes from Shannon. He has a family of four, he owns a Harley and a side by side. My kind of guy. He does go to Sturgis every year, but most of the time he'll be hauling his side-by-side. -side. He's looking at both travel trailer and fifth wheel toy haulers, unsure of the advantages, disadvantages of both. So what would you guys tell someone like this with what they have, like what kind of direction would you give them? This one might be more Tony than me when it comes to toy haulers. And... So I think the biggest thing is going to be one of the biggest questions is going to be budget. Yeah. Because obviously the the travel trailer and and fifth wheel difference is going to be um, and can be significant, significantly different, mm -hmm. you know, budget range wise. Um, 11 foot garage, you know, or 10 foot garage or, you know, what, what somebody's looking for. But I think the biggest thing to, to take into consideration is just personal preference. How often are you going to be using the side by side? How often are you going to be using the you know the garage area? And when you're not hauling those, what are the other things that you're going to be doing? So having like a uh, having a, a travel trailer that has the Happy Jack bunk system, mm -hmm. where you have a set of bunk beds in the back, what, you know, which is going to be more like a fifth wheel, has to watch your door height and things like that. So. Um, that, that, that's a great question, Shannon, but it's a little more in-depth and a little more detailed to height, width, mm -hmm. uh, length of the garage area, um, and, and what your overall things are. So, And that's uh, why I kind of said Tony might know better, because when it comes to sizes and dimensions on your side-by-side -side in the, right. the bike, those are things... Yeah. Definitely want to measure those things first to make sure, sure that whatever you're looking at is for sure going to fit. But like Tony said, it can be a pretty extreme difference for toy hauler versus fifth wheel. Yeah. Or I mean travel trailer toy hauler versus fifth wheel toy yeah. hauler. I think another thing, you guys know this, and you're going to be like, yep, right when I say it, is their overall tow capacity as well. Yes. Especially when you're factoring in a side-by-side -side the plus the toy trailer. hauler. Well, even most of your, most of your real toy haulers. And, and when I say real toy hauler, there are some, quote, toy haulers that were realistically, they're modified travel trailers. They don't extend the roof, uh, the roof height. They don't extend, they don't increase the storage or towing uh, frame capacity. So they'll have 1,500 or 2,000 pounds of towing uh, cargo carrying capacity. But if you are, if, if Shannon's actually looking for an actual toy hauler, uh, like a Vengeance uh, mm -hmm. toy hauler, tra uh, travel trailer toy hauler, uh, or up into the fifth wheels, then the frames have been desi uh, designed different. So a lot of times you're into 3,000 pounds of carrying capacity there. Yeah. Hey, we got a new segment. We thought it would be a lot of fun. It's called Think Fast. You're going to get to see how not smart <laughs> that, well, that I am. I'm not going to talk for Mallory because she possibly... I don't know. So I don't know. She's we'll like the Stephen Hawking of, oh, no. of, of knowledge. No, not, not even close. But <laughs> if we want to think that, go ahead. All right. So question number one. Okay. I'll ask you. Okay. So what percentage of Americans that camped last year, including tents? 12%, 42%, 61%, 61% or 86%? I'm going to say 42. 
Ooh, that's a that's a really get a good guess. Yeah. Would you believe it's over fifty percent? It's sixty one percent of Americans camped last year, including tits. Over fifty percent. Let's see let's see what it is for like twenty twenty when that comes out. Yeah, like gonna, how much did it increase? Yeah, it's gonna be like ninety percent. Because sixty one percent's high. That that is. That's pretty good. I wonder if that counts like people that showed up to you know for a cookout at your camp campsite and then they had a few too many cocktails and <laughs> they passed out in the lawn chair and oh yeah I went camping at my buddy Dan's last year it was a lot of fun <laughs> got mosquito bites for days all right you want to do question number two I don't care I thought yeah you do the first three with uh, me no no switch oh, it back switch and forth it okay. switch it back and forth I know I'm throwing it I'm throwing a curveball at you. all right Tony most visited national park smoky yellowstone grand canyon or glacier so because of its centralized location in the beautiful state of tennessee i'm going to say smoky you would be correct sir yeah and i, I it, it's probably one of the most it's like more heavily populated around well, and plus you got you got Gatlinburg, and yeah. you got you know you just got a lot of things that draw you to the Smoky Mountains. Yeah. You know, I gotcha. And and for you know for for us here in Indiana, I mean, that that could be a hey, we don't have anything better to do, let's go to the Smoky Mountains. It's not like you're going hey, we don't have anything better to do, let's go to the Grand Canyon this weekend. That's true. You the know. heart of the Midwest. And so yeah. Yeah. All right. How many? Households own an RV. Two million, eight hundred thousand, nine point three million, or twenty-five million. I feel like I know the first question included tents, but since that was so high, I'm taking a shot in the dark here. Nine point three million. We need a bell. Ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> That's it. Nine point three million. Households own an RV. That's pretty crazy. That's a high number. That'll that'll be another one that'll be interesting to, to see. see as that statistic changes. Right. All right. Okay. The hitch point of a fifth wheel travel trailer pivots the tow and towed vehicle. A at the rear most part of the tow vehicle. B near over the axle of the tow vehicle. Or C, it does not pivot. The trailer becomes part of the tow vehicle, similar to a bus. So re read the question again. Not the answer, it's just the question again. The hitch point of a fifth wheel trailer pivots the tow and towed vehicle. Oh, it's it's at the axle. That is correct. Yeah. Correct. What is meant by the term three-way fridge? It refers to a three-door side-by-side refrigerator. It has a fridge, a freezer, and an ice maker. It operates on 12 volt, 120, or gasoline, or it operates on 12 volt, 120, or propane. <laughs> that would be the last one. Operates on 12 propane. volt, 12 volt DC, 120, eight, uh, 120 volt AC, or propane. Could you imagine having a refrigerator that operates off gasoline? <laughs> I think yeah, that stink. <laughs> She's a runner. <laughs> All your food would have a pretty funky taste yep. to it. <laughs> you betcha. All right. What is a fantastic fan? A, a person that supports the New York Jets even when they lose. B, an electronic fan that keeps the windshield of a motorhome from fogging. C, a feature-rich roof fan used in trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes. Or D, a fan that circulates the heat or cool while the vehicle is moving. Uh, it's it's the fa uh, fantastic fans in the roof of the camper, travel trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhome circulates, you know, circulates it, air. Yeah. You got it. I like the New York Jets even when they lose. I know. <laughs> Insert Bengals, insert Brown. insert Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys. <laughs> All right, guys. New segment. 
I, I don't know if this happens in your workplace, if this happens in your household, what's going on. Dads, if you're a dad right now watching this episode, raise your hand. <laughs> because you're guilty of what I'm about to do. The new segment, my favorite segment. What's about to become your favorite segment? Tony's dad jokes. <laughs> so Tony's dad jokes of the week. Why don't mummies go on uh, go camping? I don't know. <laughs> They're afraid to relax and unwind. <laughs> but a bop. Yeah, can we? Like, Booyah! Ba-da-bop. <laughs> See Greer, dad jokes are when people my age. <laughs> Just picking on Greer, our executive senior vice president, key grip. Musical she's director. 22. Are you, Greer, are you 22? 23 next Thursday. 23 next Thursday. Ooh, next Friday we're having a birthday party for Greer. That's right. Woo! Uh, what do you call a bunch of crows that are out camping? I don't know. Murder with intent. <laughs> <laughs> That one would have a wah, 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 wah. So another new segment that we're going to do is called Tip of the Week. So typically this is going to come from a service advisor. Um, so definitely feel free to leave your questions in the comments that you might have that you want a tip on. For this week, it's me and you doing Tip of the Week. And we're going to talk about our tips for buying an RV. Your first RV. Okay. So some of the questions we get, one is new versus used. What would be your tip, Tony, on new versus used? You know, it's personal preference. It's it's budget. It's, yeah. You know, um, and 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 right now with inventory, a lot of it, you know, a lot of that rolls into what's available. Exactly. You know, um, obviously one of the biggest things is people, th- you know, people have a feeling that if they buy a, a pre-owned unit that they're, they get, get a better deal on it, um, spend, spend less money. Um, us as a dealership and the fact that, you know, we check out our units and make sure that everything's uh, operating the way it's supposed to be and within factory specifications, um, you know, doing an orientation that there, that separates you know that 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 brings together some of the advantages of buying a pre-owned versus buying buying new. But you know, it's personal preference, floor plan, what's available, what's available, and what's budget. Yeah, and I would definitely agree with you that budget comes down to a lot of it. So a lot of to- a lot of times with the pre-owned one, maybe your budget's a little smaller, but you can get a bigger yeah. pre-owned camper. Yeah. One tip that I would use to debunk when it comes to buying your, your first RV is there are a lot of people that say, oh no, I don't want to buy a pre-owned one because I don't want to buy somebody else's problems. problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, please, America, please understand that, believe it or not, the average trade cycle on an RV is similar to what it is with an automobile. Mm-hmm. Someplace between 32 and 48 months. So every three or four years, people are upgrading. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the examples I always give everybody is, here's the reality. If you've got kids now and you're buying a bunkhouse and they are eight or nine or ten for simple math because I'm not that smart, let's say they're ten. In four years they're fourteen. Think of the size difference between a ten and a fourteen. So realistically, that that three to four year change, there's things that that change drastically. You know, a thirteen year old to a seventeen year old. Now maybe you don't need they're three bunks, you only need much, two bunks. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. So yeah, we do hear that a lot. I don't want somebody else's problem. Yep. Yep. So I think, you know, what are they planning to do with it? And then alongside with that tow vehicle. So a lot in our process when we sit down with customers is we're going to ask those questions. You know, what are you wanting to do with your with your camper or your RV? What is your tow vehicle? And, you know, sometimes people are hesitant mm-hmm. to give us that information. And especially with tow vehicle, you know, like, why do you need to know that? Our biggest thing is we want you to be safe. We want your experience to be a good one. We don't, you know, if you're pulling something that technically your truck shouldn't be pulling, we don't want you to do the damage to your truck. You're going to, you know, you're going to ruin your truck pretty fast. You're going to put a lot of strain on your transmission and everything. So when we ask those questions, it's not because we want to be nosy. I mean, we do like to get to know you. 
but we also want to make sure you're safe. Well, and and the added portion of just increasing the enjoyability exactly. of, you know, I, I've I've got I've I've got some clients right now that bought their first unit. It's a 28 foot travel trailer that measures down about 31 feet overall, and realistically, they they've pulled it twice and they're they're wanting to trade. They, they want to trade it. It's a 20, it's brand new 2021, but they want to trade down in size because he feels like three feet would make him more, you know, if he could go down three feet in size, it would make him feel much more comfortable towing it. So, yeah. So we just want you to, you know, that's, that's why we ask all those questions. So make sure, you know, you've got an idea, um, you know, how you're going to use it. We, we also don't want to sell you too much camper. You know, believe it or not, you know, one thing that we're not good at is, is spending your money. But we also, you know, if you're only going to use a camper three or four times a year, do you really need, you know, the biggest, fanciest, you know, you know, bigger, better, faster, fancier, more? Right. You know, I mean, it's your money. And definitely don't be scared when you're looking at a camper. Lay in the bed. Make sure it's going to be, you know, you're going to fit. Yeah. Because we, we see a lot of people that they need to make sure they fit not only the bed, but the shower. So sure. I've had, I know you've had it too, tons of customers where they go stand in the shower. Yeah. Or, you know, they imagine what it's like using the kitchen or even the bathroom sometimes. Right. Yeah. Make sure it works for you. So yeah. don't be scared. Yeah. To don't do actually use the toilet. Yeah, don't. But it's don't. okay to sit on it. It's okay to sit on it to make sure your leg room and everything yeah. is good. Make sure you got elbow room. But don't, yeah, don't use it, please. Yeah. <laughs> so I think another tip um, that seems to come up ha- has been coming up or a question that's been coming up a lot, um, at least that I've had with clients that I've been talking to, um, the difference between securing my own financing by going to my own credit union or my bank or allowing the dealership to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, we get that a lot. And, you know, financing is a big part of it. You want to make sure it's within your budget and everything. Us here, you know, we have our no fee guarantee, you know, our zilch nada. Zero we, zip zilch nada. That we advertise. So pay attention to those things as you're buying a camper. Um, a lot of dealerships, including us, we offer financing. And it's convenient, you know, instead of going through your bank, we go through multiple banks that we can use. So you never know, we might be able to find you a better rate, maybe um, work with the term a little bit more. Um, just some different options that we might be able to do instead of going to just one financial institution. We'd like to make that convenient for you. So just take it out of out of your hands so you don't have to worry about it, right? Another part that goes along with the financing um, portion that I've seen with a lot of clients is, you know, do I do I go to my own bank or do I, you know, let the dealership do it? And I've always thought it's funny with the, I've always thought it's funny that you deal with bank A, insert credit union or bank name here, and as the dealership, we we have the capability to deal with that same insert bank or credit union name here. You call your bank or credit union, you get an interest rate, they pre-approve you, then you come to the dealership and we go through the exact same lender and we get a better rate. And people are, they get frustrated with that. Well, why didn't, you know, why didn't they give me the same rate? It's because of the volume of business that the dealership does. The lenders know that they have to stay extremely competitive. You're going to borrow money from your bank or credit union once a year, mm-hmm. once every couple of years. But our business office is sending, you know, hundreds of deals a month mm-hmm. through that same lender. So it becomes a very competitive right. number. So Right. So just a little bit of the back end yeah. of it that a lot of people don't think about. Yeah. So. So that was it. Is that's that our it? new. That was our new segment. That's our new segment. By the way, I think in our our tip of the week, I think we're gonna. If, if you haven't had the luxury of meeting our good friend Matt Gowdy, uh, I think we'll be joined by Matt Gowdy next week with tip of the week. So if you've got any tips that you want to know about, make sure you send them in to us. Yeah. If yeah. you've got tip, I have interrupted you again. Dang it, Tony. No, you're fine. Go ahead. Um, or if you've got some tips that you want to share with us. Yeah. If you've learned some valuable lessons, like using <laughs> the donut on the 
on the sewer hose connector. I had, had a customer tell me yesterday they couldn't figure out what the little donut, the, the little black rubber donut oh, was no. for to hold the sewer hose oh, no. into his um, honey wagon. The other thing that he didn't do was he didn't release the little cap up at the top. So the, 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 you can actually screw a water hose onto yeah. of it and, and clean it out. So he's sharing with me the fact that he didn't use the donut. So he's just like holding the thing, the hose down in there, and he's dumping his holding tanks. Luckily, it was the gray water tank, but he didn't take the little vent cap off. So, of course, the, the, the blue honey wagon, which had air in it, now you're putting, he's emptying his holding tanks. It's ballooning up until it built up enough pressure that it spewed the gray water back up, pushed the hose off of it. <laughs> and he was dumping his holding tanks, his termination valve, underneath the, was, is underneath the slide. So when the slide's out, he was literally right down underneath it. So when it spewed up, it, it went up and hit the bottom of the slide oh, okay. and rain, uh, rain gray water on him. So if you've got a tip on... Not doing that. We all learn the hard way sometimes. You know. But, yeah, and definitely let us know what you thought of the show, too, which segments you did and didn't like, or even if you have a segment idea, maybe. Yeah, if there's something you'd like to see in the show, bring it. Yep. But until next time, guys. Woohoo! Next week's Greer's birthday party. We'll see you next week for a birthday celebration. Booyah! <laughs> see you guys. Bye. Thank you.